Hello everyone, this Houdini build is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more like an overview of a certain set of VEX functions. These are the sample functions. These are many times overlooked and, and are a very powerful vector randomization functions. Many times you just use a rand function and that can be not enough in some situations. That's because it ranges from 0 to 1 and there's a lack of control. So to make that rand to make what we want we have to write a long and complex code. So let's take a look into these functions. Okay, you can see here we have all these all these functions. It's a bit confusing. It's it's messy because there are a lot. So let's start by organizing this. Here you can see. Uh, here are all the all the functions. There are three groups, and depending on the kind of vector that they give. This will be vector 2, 3 and 4. Then, every group is classified in two subgroups. The top ones, this one, this one and this one, will make uniform distributions. Without any control or any range, it will be uniform. And the bottom ones, this one, this one and this one, we'll have some sort of control to control the range of our randomization. And then in every group there are two, two functions. The bottom one will be the normalized version of the top one. So all second functions are exactly the same as the one above but normalized. Okay, so let's start with the vector3 functions. So you can see here that we have a tip on how this works. So we have this sample sphere uniform and it says points in sphere volume. So if we have a sphere, this will scatter points inside of this sphere and create vectors like that. Some will be short, some will be long, but the length will be maximum of one, because this is a unit sphere. And this one will be exactly the same, but instead of using the volume, we'll use the surface. So it will create only points in the surface, so length will be one. Okay? So let's see how this work in Houdini. We have a point here, single point. Let's copy it to make to, ha to have more. Let's have 150 points and let's lay down a point wrangle. Let's create a random vector and we'll add it to the point position. Okay. So let's use this one here. Now, what argument do we need here? We need a random number between 0 and 1. And for every number, it will give a different vector. So we can use the point number. OK. So as you can see, we have random vectors inside of the unit sphere. And if instead of using sphere, we use direction, the points are in the surface of this sphere, as it says here. OK, so let's go to the range ones, this one here. So you can see they use a spherical sector and a spherical cap. So we will define we will define a cone 
inside of this sphere and we will need the direction of this cone and the angle of this cone and we will scatter points inside of the cone or in the cup if it's the normalized one so let's go to Houdini so we'll use this sample sphere cone so sample sphere cone and here we will need more arguments than just this because we will need the direction of the cone the angle and then the random number so let's specify the the, the direction of, of this cone so we'll point it upwards we'll convert the angle from degrees to radians so let's make a control here and lastly we'll have the random number okay so you can see that we have all our points are here because the angle right now is zero but if we start increasing it you see how it opens and we have a cone inside of the unit sphere and if instead of of sphere cone we type direction cone it will be only in the shell of that cone in the cap of it okay so as you can see this can give us lots of control for example if instead of specifying a simple vector we use attribute like the normal for example so let's make a quick example here well, I will lay down a sphere make it polygon and let's duplicate it a few times well, first let's create normals in the points so we have this normal here and we have now 50 points in every every point here so let's lay down another point wrangle well let's copy th th this one but instead of modifying the position we'll modify the normal so we'll have this one and the direction of the cone instead of going up we'll use the normal so you can see that we have a cone in every point and we have control over the amplitude of that cone you can see that this is very useful for procedural modeling or any controllable effects work see okay so these are the vector 3 methods let's go to the vector 2 as you can see it says circle in x y so we will use a unit circle and we in the first one we'll create points in the circle and create vectors like this this one will be the normalized one so we will create points but only in the circumference of this circle so we'll have unit vectors and the bottom ones as you can guess make the same as this but instead of a cone we'll have a slice of that circle okay so let's jump into Houdini and see how this works so we'll come here and instead of using this one we'll use this one so sample circle uniform and since this is the uniform one we all only need random numbers so you can see we have a circle in here 
in the xy plane and this will be then normalized and this will have controls so let's jump into this one sample circle slice so this will be the same arguments as before but since we are in vector 2 we'll need a vector 2 direction so uh, let's say that we want it to point up so we do it like this then we just we specify the angle in radians of course so you can see we have exactly the same but instead of in a sphere in a circle okay and this will be you know exactly the same but instead of the circle we use an arc so they stay there so this is a bit confusing because it looks like we are constrained to this plane so how can we move this into this example here where we have this oriented cones what if we want to orient this circle let's go back to the uniform one and here so what if we want to orient this well first of all let's jump into this one and we use the normals to visualize it okay so as you can see all of our circles are in the xy plane so we will use a, a vex function called dihedral and dihedral takes two vectors and computes the rotation matrix to get from the first one to the second one and using that matrix we can rotate our rv so let's calculate that matrix so it will be matrix 3 we'll call it rot for example and we'll use the dihedral and here we need to specify two vectors from where to where so we are gonna point the z vector so and we will point it to the normal so like this and now we need to take rv and multiply it by the rotation matrix and as you can see we have nice oriented circles here these were the 2d vectors let's jump back to photoshop and see about the vector 4 these are a bit hard to visualize because instead of using a circle or a sphere they use a hypersphere and you can't draw a hypersphere so we need to keep it simple and imagine like we went from 2d to 3d with a circle and a sphere and we get 2d vectors and 3d vectors well we go one step up and we get 4d vectors but the same rules apply on how uh, how these are computed how these are calculated so we can use these ones to get 4d vectors one very useful one is the orient okay let's create a very simple scene let's so we have our points here let's dial this down we have 50 points and let's copy our template geo here our our default geo sorry let's scale it down and let's use this one to give random orientations so let's we can 
come here and let's create the orient the orient attribute so it's a four vector so it's with a p and let's use this one some sample orientation uniform so oh sorry sample orientation uniform and we'll use again uh, random numbers here So you can see we have complete random vectors for for the vectors you can see and we can use we can guess how this work how this works so let's use the cone one and let's see what arguments this one has so we have a center vector 4 and then again the angle and the random number so let's specify a, a vector 4 for example 1 0 0 0 the angle exactly the same as before So you can see here that we can control the amplitude of that orient from totally still and then we can start increasing it. So if, even though we can't visualize the hypersphere, we can, we can see how this works because once we understood these ones, these four ones, well, these eight, these are exactly the same. So these work in the same way. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.